Hello friends, welcome to another video in the NAT on Cisco IOS routers module. In this lesson, we'll be looking at how to configure and verify static NAT. If you recall, a static NAT is an explicit mapping between one IP address to another IP address. The syntax to configure a static NAT on a Cisco router is like this. Each part of that is mapped out in this table. The first part, IP NAT, is simply the way every NAT command on a Cisco IOS router starts. The next part, inside source, indicates to the router that it's going to translate the source of packets as they arrive on any interface labeled with the IP NAT inside command. This is why you must designate the NAT interfaces before you configure any actual static NAT. Then you'll specify the static keyword. This indicates you are creating a static NAT. And then finally, you list the inside local and the inside global. These are the IP addresses that you are explicitly telling the router to create a mapping between. So we're going to configure some static NATs on R2 for host1 and host2. Quick reminder of the layout of all the windows in our lab topology. R2 is our NAT router sitting between the inside and outside segments. These two windows are the terminal windows for host1 and 2. These two windows are the packet captures on either side of R2. This is the R2 terminal where we will be configuring and verifying all of our network address translation. And finally, this window is host4 if we need to initiate traffic externally. Now the first thing you have to do before you configure any sort of address translation on a Cisco router is to tell the router which interfaces are inside and which interfaces are outside. We covered this in a prior video, uh, and you'll see that this is actually already taken care of on router 2. We've already configured Ethernet 00 as the inside interface and Ethernet 01 as the outside interface. What we're going to do first is create a static translation for host un, for host one rather. The command for a static translation starts with the word IP NAT, then you list inside source, then you say this is going to be a static translation, and then finally you list the inside local address, uh, host one's IP address is 10.11.11, and we're going to go ahead and translate that to 999.11. 11. If I hit enter here, you can verify the configuration by using the command show IP NAT translations. You'll see that in my translation table, the router has already specified that anytime it sees the inside local 10.11.11, it's going to translate it to 999.11. Now notice the output of this command is showing you the inside global, the inside local, the outside local, and the outside global. So it's very important to understand what each of those four words mean to understand how to read this table. We'll be using the show IP NAT translations command a whole lot. So let's jump on host one, where we just configured the NAT. And let's shoot over a ping to host three. Uh, we'll, just, we'll use the dash C one to say we're only gonna send a count of one because we don't really need to send much more than that. We'll hit enter and we'll take a look at our TCP dump windows to map out what happened. Notice when router when host one sent the packet, it had a source IP address of 10.11.11 and a destination IP address of 73.5.9.33, which is where we told the ping to go. This is the packet as it looks right here before it crosses router two. After it crosses router two, this is what the packet looks like. And notice that the source IP address has changed to 999.11, which is exactly what we configured. When host three responded, it responded to the IP address 999.11. And then when it crossed router two again, router two untranslated that back to 10.1.1.11, where it was successfully delivered to host one, showing us a successful response to our ping. And we can do the same thing with a netcat command uh, to show uh, what a TCP connection would look like, uh, but you'll notice it's very, very similar. On this side of router two, it was uh, from 10.11.11, source port 36673 to destination 735933, port 80. On the other side, the only thing that changed is the source IP address. Notice 999.11, versus 10.11.11. Notice the source port didn't change. Uh, the only thing that changed is the layer three header. Hence, this is definitely a 
NAT, a network address translation. And also notice it changed in accordance with the directions we explicitly provided, hence this is a static configuration. If I do my show IP NAT translations command again, you'll see that there's an entry now correlating to this packet right here. Let's talk through it. This entry is indicating that the inside local of 10.1.1.11, port 36673, which is exactly what the packet was when it left host 1, was translated to the inside global of 999.11, port 36673. Once again, the port number, the port number didn't change. Only the IP address changed, hence this is definitely NAT. For the outside host, host 3, uh, the IP address and port did not change because we are, we're not doing any translations on that address. Okay, so let's go ahead and configure a second static NAT. This time we'll do it for host 2. Again, the command will be the same IP NAT inside source static, and then we'll uh, use host 2's IP address, which is 10.1.1.22, and we'll translate that to 9.9.9.22. If I hit enter here, I'll jump on host, host 2, and I'll shoot a ping over to uh, host 4, just for kicks. Again, we'll just shoot over 1. You'll see that the ping was successful, uh, and what was initially from 10.1.1.2.2 to 73.5.9.44 was translated by our router to 9.9.9.22.73.5.9.44. If I do my show IP NAT translations command, you'll see something interesting. This line is indicate is in reference to this packet that was translated. You'll notice it's saying we had an ICMP packet from 999.22, and then you see this 7937. Now, this is an ICMP packet, so ICMP packets don't have ports. What this 7937 is, is it's actually uh, the ICMP ID number. This ID number is simply a randomly generated number that is associated with ICMP packets to link different ICMP pings from the same command. Notice if I do this exact same command, except this time I shoot over three of them, uh, you'll see that all three of them had the ID of 8193. And if I do my show IP NAT translations command, there you're seeing, oh, I guess I only sent two of them. Either way, there you're seeing uh, 8193 in the output uh, correlating to this. So don't put too much weight on this. All it is is just, just linking both of these uh, pings and ping responses together as a part of the same command. If we did it again, this time actually sending three, you'll see all three of them have, in this case, 8449. And if you look at our show IP NAT translations, uh, we can expect to see 8449. Uh, this is still the one from the prior one, which hasn't timed out. Cool, so that is a static NAT. Uh, just to complete the uh, circle, we'll also, we'll also do a uh, netcat, so we can show you a TCP connection between host 2 uh, and host 4. So three, five, four. Uh, we'll use port 80. Let me enter a few times to space this out. And there you'll see... There's a SYN request. It went from 10.1.1.22, uh, source port 4467. On the other side, the source was changed from 999 to 999.22, source 44617. And again, we see this mapped out in the show IP NAT translations uh, command. Now, a couple interesting things. We configured these two commands. As soon as we configured these two commands, the router added these lines to the NAT translation table. These lines are showing you, hey, anything that has the source 10.1.1.11 is going to be natted to the, uh, is going to be natted to 999.11, regardless of what the outside addresses are. So these are a result of simply configuring them, and these are a result of traffic actually flowing through it. Uh, at this point, the traffic for these two we'll say connections has probably died or timed out. So if I do the show IP NAT translations command, as expected, we're only showing you the result of the configuration. If I shoot over another ping, or in this case, another telnet, uh, not a telnet, another netcat TCP connection, and I do show IP 
NAT translations. Now you'll see this line is a result of actual traffic flowing through my device, whereas these two were simply a result of the configuration itself. So that wraps up the lesson on configuration and configuring and verifying static NAT on a Cisco router. In total, in total, what we configured, we had done the NAT interfaces in a prior video, and these are the static NAT commands that we configured in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.